Greetings to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And once again, we are gathered together in spirit to worship our God, uh, even though we are at different places. You know, as I was preparing worship, uh, yeah, I was reminded by, uh, of a conversation uh, that Jesus had with a Samaritan woman by this, uh, beside the Jacob well. You know, the Samaritan woman told Jesus that their ancestors worship at the mountain, but you Jews worship in Jerusalem. You know, and, and the a remarkable thing is that Jesus said that uh, a time is coming and has yet come that the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshipper the Father seeks. God is spirit and His worshipper must worship in spirit and in truth. So let us draw near uh, in faith, believing that even though we are not in our church premise, our omnipresent God is with us. His presence is here with you, either in the living room or your bedroom or your study room or here with me in the uh, sanctuary, uh, in, a, in, a, in a church hall. Uh, so let's commit this time uh, to the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, You are the awesome God, the sovereign God, the eternal God. And you are forever to be praised. And Father, we pray that God indeed let your kingdom come, let your will be done. And guide us, help us. And Jesus, thank you for being our, our righteousness. Thank you for saving us, redeeming us, that right now we can worship you. Lord Jesus, cleanse our hearts that we can just, so that we can enter in your presence and worship you. Holy Spirit, come and fill this place. Fill this place. Fill this place so that we can commune with you. We commit this whole service into your hands. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us praise and bless our God for who He is and not what our circumstances are. Romans says, Romans 6.28 says that, and that we know in all things that God worked for those who loved Him, who has been called according to His purpose. So come, let us bless the Lord in all circumstances for He is a great God, a God, a loving God, and a patient God. Hallelujah. Let's just worship God. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh, oh, my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh, my soul. I'll worship His Sing your song again Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me Let me be singing when the evening comes Bless the Lord I will keep 
of praise and worship rise from our place to your holy presence yes may our worship and praise like sweet incense rise for you are God you are God and holy God receive our praise and honor day and night night and day let incense arise day and night night and day let incense arise day and night night and day let incense arise day and night night and day let incense arise for you worthy of it all you are worthy of it all for from you are all things and to you are all things and you deserve the glory yes Lord you are worthy of it all you are worthy of it all from you are all things and to you are all things you deserve the glory brothers and sisters you sing you are worthy of it all you are worthy from you are all things and to you are all things you deserve the glory oh you are worthy of Church, you're about to enter into a time of prayer. You know, even as we enter into this time of prayer, remember the Word of God says that my God will supply every need of ours according to the glory of Christ in Christ Jesus. You know, we serve a God who provides for us. We serve a God who is a provider, a God who looks after us and takes care of His people. He will be our God and we will be His people. And so we give thanks and we have many things to give thanks for. And today, I just want to highlight some things that we as a community are giving thanks for. And I believe that you also have things that you have things that you'd like to give thanks for as well. And so very soon, I'd like to invite you to press the pause button, and we're going to stop and give thanks to God for the items on the screen as well as the things that you are giving thanks for. So right now, I invite you to please press the pause button. And even in the same light, we remember that our God will supply every need of ours. Our God is a God who, not, who listens to our prayer and also provides for our needs and supplies for our needs. And so right now, we want to come to God with some prayer needs that we have, or prayer pointers that we have. And very soon, once again, we're going to put onto your screen some prayer pointers that we'd like to encourage you to pray for as a community. Uh, especially we want to highlight the current COVID-19 migrant worker situation. Let's continue to press into prayer for them. Let's continue to stand with them in prayer and to contend for God to really move powerfully amidst this. That even amidst this, we not only pray for their recovery, but we also pray for their emotional and mental health well-being. Well -being. And we also want to pray that God will continue to watch over them. And through this, they will somehow experience hope and experience peace amidst whatever is happening. 
So may I invite you wherever you are, you know, I'm sure that you also have some prayer needs and I want to encourage you also to, to pray for one another and pray for your prayer needs as well and bring it and lay it before God in prayer. So let's press the pause button now and let's pray. Let me close us in prayer. Let's pray. God, we thank you that you're a good God, you're a faithful God. God, you're a God who has promised in Lamentations chapter 3 that your steadfast love never ceases, your mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And God, we recognize and we acknowledge that you are such a faithful God. So God, we just pray that even as we come to you right now with our prayer requests and the needs of our church and ourselves as well. God, I know that you're a God who hears it. You're a God who desires to, to meet our needs. You're a God who, 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 who would take care of his people. And so God, we lift up these prayers to you knowing that you, you love us and that you are a God who will watch over us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Church, we're about to hear the word. So let's lean into the word of God and hear what uh, today's message. God wants to speak to us through today's message. Hi church, it's so good to be able to connect like this again. You know, the circuit breaker measure has given us uh, many uh, new opportunities uh, to connect uh, and we're so happy that we have been able to connect on uh, a few levels now. And today we are able to connect again uh, in this uh, church at home package. Uh, indeed, we are, at, uh, we are in some pre unprecedented moments and uh, Thankfully, we, would, we should see the end of it really soon. Um, and we want to just pray that God will continue to heal those who are not well, uh, continue to protect those who are at the moment well, that we can get out of this unscathed. But most of all, that the church will come out of this a stronger church. Now, we want to continue on the sermon series, uh, in the series Elevate, where we're looking at the higher level of praying. Now, where we are looking at uh, is the prayer of Jesus, no, otherwise known as the Lord's Prayer. And it is so that we can learn to pray like our Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, not in the style or the way He prayed or the timing per se, but we want to be in line. We want to pray in line with the things that He wants us to be concerned about. And so today, we want to look specifically at the line that goes like this. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. I want to take a look at this line again, and I find it really interesting that this whole line is taken as a whole. Often we stop, you know, in, in, in the sense of trying to appreciate the meaning of this line, we stop at the first line, forgive us our trespasses. And we ignore, or we don't put the two together. I think if we have the chance to put the two together, we would have learned a lot more. But I want to begin with the story on forgiveness. Now, many of us have taken the chance, uh, this circuit breaker, to catch up on watching movies, uh, either the ones that you have yet to watch or the ones that you really like and you would like to watch again. Now, I don't know if you have watched the Academy Award-winning movie, Forrest Gump, uh, starring Tom Hanks. Now, it's a great mo movie, many memorable scenes. And I want to ask you to recall with me, I, I'm trying to describe a, a scene with you, a scene for you, where Forrest Gump and his girlfriend, by then they have all grown up, and he accompanied his girlfriend back to her home. Right? And this was the home that she grew up in. This was a home where her father abused her. And, this, and, and by then, by the, this time in the movie, the father has died. But as the lady, as the girlfriend, looked at the house, uh, and recall, you know, all that she had gone through, she was so overcome by rage that she began picking up stones from the floor. The picks up, he, she, she would pick up a, a stone from the floor and she'll start throwing at the house. And she'll break a window, she'll break the roof, and she'll pick up something else, and she'll break something else, and she'll keep throwing and throwing. And soon it became rapid, you know, she went on throwing and throwing a rock, rock after rock against the house. And her name, Jenny, Jenny would do this over and over again, over and over again, and Forrest Gump would be there just watching. And she'd be so angry, sometimes crying, sometimes hurling with all her strength. And finally, Jenny would then fall to the ground in exhaustion. And that scene ended with a very insightful Forrest Gump comment. What did Forrest Gump say? Forrest Gump said this, he says, Sometimes there just aren't enough rocks. Sometimes, there just aren't enough rocks. You know, friends, many of us struggle with forgiveness. 
and it can stem from a variety of reasons, and some anger seems very justifiable. And yet, unresolved anger leaves us wanting revenge and looking for more rocks to hurl at the object of our anger. Now, I want to say that the, the rage will never be satisfied and relief will never be found this way. Many of us think that revenge will help us with our anger and we will be satisfied after that. That cannot be further away from the truth. Now, the Bible says that there is a better way. There is a great purpose for us to forgive to pray, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And the, and the scripture text for today will tell us how and why we must resolve our scripture, our, our anger and our differences. But before we go any further, I want to read the scripture text for you today. And after that, I'll join, ask you to join me in a word of prayer. I want to read to you from Matthew chapter 6, from verse 12 to verse 15. And Matthew chapter 6, verse 12 to verse 15 says, And forgive our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. This is the word of the Lord. Let's go to God in prayer. God, we come before you and we pause at this point of time. Lord, we recognize the word that has been spoken to us and we pray, Lord, that these words will make sense in a moment. And Lord, our lives will be changed so that we can become more like you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, anger and revenge does not solve anything. There just aren't enough rocks, not enough energy. It's too, it's too negative. Now, Jesus included this teaching in his prayer to remind us that there is a better solution to taking revenge. And what is that better solution? The better solution is to forgive. Now, I want to say that forgiveness does not just deal with our anger and revenge. There is actually much more at stake when we don't forgive. And hopefully this sermon will cover that because forgiveness does a lot more than that. You know, when preparing for this sermon, I read a chapter uh, from the book by Robert Dr. Solomon um, uh, in, this, uh, in, in, his, in his book, The Lord's Prayer. And he calls this particular line, the heart of the Lord's Prayer. Now, I'm not, I wasn't sure why he said it at first, but it became clearer as I studied into this line and discovered the intent of this part of the Lord's Prayer. Now, what is it that I have discovered? There are three important lessons I want to share with you with regards to the Lord's Prayer in this line in the Lord's Prayer. Number one, I want to say the first lesson that I've learned is that forgiving others quickly reminds us that we have been forgiven much more than we think. That forgiving others quickly helps us to remember that we have been forgiven much more than we think. Now, later on in Matthew 18, Jesus told the parable of the unforgiving servant who, after being forgiven a big debt, goes to put his friend in jail for a much smaller debt. And that led to a same warning as we see in verse 14 and 15 in our scripture text. And the warning is said there, So also my Father, my heavenly Father, will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. Now, isn't it interesting that this particular line in the Lord's Prayer comes with a bit of an explanation. The explanation that followed after verse 12 is found in verse uh, 14 and 15, right? In, in Matthew 16, in Matthew 6. That if you do not forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive, oh, let me read it again. If you forgive others their trespasses, you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Jesus again repeats this in chapter, Matthew chapter 18, the same way. Now, I want to say in Matthew chapter 18, now Jesus introduced a concept uh, when it comes to forgiving others. He introduced a clue. And you know, for, for the longest time, we have read this passage and I have not seen it. But this is the first time I've seen it this way. Now, Jesus said that when forgiving, when deciding to forgive others, you know, 
you know, um, no, Jesus didn't say that, no. Uh, we all, uh, when trying to forgive somebody else, we always look for justification, isn't it? We try to, you know, we try to find a reason. Give me one reason why I should forgive him. Give me one reason why I should forgive you. We look for a likable point about this person that we want to forgive. Perhaps we look for whether he has a potential for change. You know, will he change after I forgive him? And we look, you know, we wonder if a person deserves it. But this was what God thought of the situation when he chose to forgive us. Look at Matthew chapter 18, verse 33. He says, you know, should not and should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you. Wow, I've not seen it this way before, but you know, the only reason, the only justifying reason, if there ever is one, for God to forgive us is because He chose to have mercy. And therefore, if we are looking for a justifying reason, you know, to, to forgive somebody else, don't, don't. Jesus says, use mercy. Even as we've been forgiven by God's mercy, we forgive others. You know, when God dealt with us, it was always mercy. So it is still always mercy even as we deal with each other. And as such, the strength or the motivation to forgive someone else is the same as the motivation or the reason by which we have been forgiven by God. And that is mercy. That we must forgive others even as we have been forgiven must emphasize to us that no one will ever come close to offending us compared to how much we have offended God. We owe God a big debt, and He, out of His mercy, has forgiven us. And that's why later on, also in Matthew chapter 7, verse 3, Jesus said very scathingly, Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? You know, friends, we need to always remember that we have been forgiven much, and we mustn't think for a moment that we are not that bad. You know, don't ever believe that. We nailed Jesus to the cross. It was our sin that has brought him there. And we needed mercy to have been forgiven. And so it has always been mercy. And therefore we must remember that we have been forgiven much. That's the first lesson. Now the second lesson is this, that the forgiveness of sins is for the greater purpose of reconciliation. That the forgiveness of sin is for the greater purpose of reconciliation. Now, forgiveness is not an end in itself. You know, we are not just asked to be a forgiven people because we want to be known as a forgiven people. No, forgiveness is the gateway to reconciliation. It makes reconciliation possible. Now, see, this is because with sin, alienation and estrangement has happened, not just between men and God, but alienation and estrangement has happened between men and men. Now, uh, in Robert Solomon's book, again on the Lord's Prayer, he suggested that the effect of the fall did not just affect the relationship between us and God only. Something else was impacted. And that something else was the relationship between human beings. Well, let me prove it to you as Robert Solomon has uh, pointed out in his book. He says, look at Genesis verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 12. You know, when, when Adam was accused of taking, you know, the, the eating the fruit of life, right? And that led to him sinning. He immediately turned, you know, after sinning to blame someone else. And he told God, God, the woman you gave to me, she gave me the fruit of the tree and I ate. The alienation and the estrangement has started. And only one generation later, you have the very first murder in, in the Bible. The murder, the murder of Abel by Cain out of jealousy. Simply because their father favoured Abel's sacrifice more than his. And so this led Solomon to say that since the fall, the litany of armed conflicts, the inter-ethnic violence, the genocide and the light are daily supported by the more mundane and ever-present realities of relational conflicts, misunderstandings, competitiveness, injustices and exploitation. And that is why when Jesus came, Jesus said that He came, or the Bible teaches us that Jesus came to bring also the ministry of reconciliation. This is made very clear to us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18 and 19. He says there, all this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to Himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. And that is, 
In Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and also entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Now, I'm, I want you to begin to see a, a, a progression here. I want to say that firstly, we need to recognize that, you know, we must, you know, but forgiveness doesn't end there, but we must recognize that, you know, uh, that we have been forgiven much, right? But this forgiveness has a greater purpose, and it is for the purpose of reconciliation. Because without forgiveness, there can be no reconciliation. If God did not choose to forgive us out of His great mercy, there will be no reconciliation. But you know what? Even then, it is not the end result. You know what is the intended goal of this reconciliation? That will be the third lesson of forgiveness. The third lesson in forgiveness is this that reconciliation is the gateway to us fulfilling the great commandment. Reconciliation is the, great, is the gateway to us fulfilling the great commandment. Now, what is the great commandment? Jesus said the great commandment is this, Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 to 40. And he said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And this is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself, and on these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Now, let me try and answer a question that some of us may have been asking for a long time. You know, sometimes we often ask, and often hear this question being asked, sometimes some of you have asked me before, you know, and some of you will ask me this, that why do we need to keep praying for forgiveness for our sins when our sins, and it is clear that our sins have already been forgiven at the cross? Why do we need, keep, why do we need to keep praying, forgive us our sins, when it is clear that our sins have already been forgiven? Now, at this point of the sermon, I want to highlight that this passage in Matthew 6 was directed at the apostles, at, at the disciples, the disciples of Christ and not the non-believers. And therefore, this has nothing to do with our salvation. Our salvation has already been decided or will be decided when Jesus goes to die on the cross for us. But we must realize today that without the forgiveness of sins, two things will be impacted. Number one, we will not be able to come to love God fully. And number two, we will have no strength to be able to forgive the sins of others. And therefore, we cannot come to love others as we love ourselves. And that is part of the great commandment as well. Now, one point at a time. So the first point as to why we are unable to love God fully. Now, Solomon explains that when, when, we, ask, you know, when we ask for forgiveness daily, God's forgiveness and our repentance will meet in the land of divine grace to bring us to reconciliation with God. That it is not so much the forgiveness that is related to our conversion, but the forgiveness that has to do with our ongoing sanctification, our growth into holiness and Christian maturity. Now, what Solomon is saying is that we need to remember that we have been forgiven much and we're still dependent on God's mercy. And we must have this attitude if we want to have this close relationship with God, to come to Him and to be so close so that He can change us to become like Him. Now, when we pray for forgiveness daily, we are coming in repentance to God so that He can make us more and more like Him. Now, Francis Chan said in his book, Crazy Love, that lukewarm people don't really want to be saved from their sin. They only want to be saved from the penalty of their sin. That is so true, isn't it? You know, we pray the first prayer to ask God to forgive our sins. Well, that will forgive us of the penalty of our sin. But we must continue to pray, forgive us our sins, because we want God to save us from our sin, that we may become more and more like Christ. That deals with the first part, so that we can love God. Now, the second bit, we need to forgive each other, because this forgiveness will help us to reach the full potential in our reconciliation, in our community especially. Now, let me explain this through the words of the author and pastor Paul Tripp in his book, Whiter Than Snow. He says this, Now, we aren't created to be independent, autonomous, or self-sufficient. We were made to live in a humble, worshipful, and loving dependency upon God, and in a loving and humble interdependency with others. Our lives were designed to be community projects, 
Yet the foolishness of sin tells us that we have all that we need within ourselves. And so we settle for relationships that never go beneath the casual. We defend ourselves when people around us point, us point out a weakness or a wrong. We hold our struggles within, not taking advantage of the resources God has given us. Now what Paul Tripp is trying to tell us is this, that we are made not only to be reliant on God, we are also made to be reliant on each other. And the good news is this, that not only is God here to help us, not only do we have God to help us, we also have others to help us. And that is to tell us that we have resources that we have yet to make use of. We have not engaged each other in bringing about the best in us. We need each other and therefore we need to pray, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So the Bible is very clear about our obligations to each other. And I want to say that we need to take these obligations more seriously. I just want to point out one verse to you. It tells us in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8 and 10, Above all, keep loving one another. Uh, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. Show hospitality to one another without grumbling. And as each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied gift, God's varied grace. Now this verse is very clear. What does it tell us to do? Love one another. Show hospitality to one another. Serve one another. And I'm sure you can identify a few other verses in the Bible that tells us about our, our obligations to each other. And so let me summarize the three lessons that I've learned. Number one, forgiving others quickly, you know, forgiving others quickly will help us to remember that we have been forgiven much more than we think. And we always must remember that. God has given us much mercy. Number two, that the forgiveness of sin is for the greater purpose of reconciliation. And there is the next step. And reconciliation then is the gateway to us fulfilling the great commandment. And so I want to say that the stakes are much higher than we think. It is not just about forgiving someone else. Unforgiveness affects everything. It is not just about avoiding the person. Well, you come for 8 o'clock service, I go to 9.45. You go to traditional, I go to contemporary service. It's not just that. Unforgiveness will not give us the ability to enjoy the fullness of God and the ability to enjoy the fullness of, God, of what God has got in store for us in each other. And so this is very important for us to learn. And that's why I believe Robert Solomon said, this is the heart of the prayer of Jesus. And this is why Jesus included this line in his prayer. And so let me end by asking you this, you know, you know, by helping us to apply this lesson for today. And I want to ask you to do two things, you know, even as we, even as we um, you know, try to apply the lesson for today. The first thing I want to ask you to do is, number one, I want to ask you to always remind you of how much God has forgiven you. Ask God to always remind you of how much He has forgiven you. You know, one of the things that we have done as a staff uh, team in our church uh, is I think for about one year plus now, since the beginning of last year, we have uh, gathered at the door every morning and we would, uh, as, as morning devotion, whoever is in the office in, at, at 9.15 in the morning, we gather at the door and we'll read one chapter from the book of Proverbs. And that's because Proverbs is easy to read and it's also because Proverbs has 31 chapters and so every day we will just read the, verse, the, the chapter that is corresponding to the date for that, for, for that day of the month. And as we begin to read Proverbs over and over again, many things, uh, we have come to learn many things and I, 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 I do recall some of them uh, much better than the others and I try to apply them in my own lives. And one of the things that I've, 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 I've learned and I remember a bit more now and I remember it very fondly is this uh, two verses or three verses that comes out of Proverbs 30. Now in Proverbs 30, uh, the prayer of uh, the person who wrote it says, Two things I ask of you, deny them not to me before I die. Remove far from me falsehood and lying. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food that is needful for me lest I be full and deny you and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal 
and profane the name of my God. Every now and then, I will pray this prayer for myself. I want God to remove from me falsehood and lie. I want God to remind me of how much I have been forgiven. And when he looks at me, it's not, he doesn't look at me for the work that I do, not that it means anything much, but that he will look at me with mercy. And I ask him, God, you know, keep me on and keep my feet on the ground, no matter what others may say. You know, some of you are very kind. You always send messages to me to encourage me, to thank me for doing this and that. You know, and, and sometimes, you know, I get carried away, right? But I remind myself each time with this prayer. God, tell me that I've been forgiven much so that I can treat others with the same mercy that you have given, you have shown me. That's the first thing I want to ask you all to do going from today. Do not say, you know, for any, you know, do not think for a single moment that you're not bad, you're better than the rest. That was what the, pub, the publican did, right? The, the, the guy who sat there, you know, praying aloud and, and then look, uh, looking across, you know, uh, at the Pharisee. And he was comparing himself with the Pharisee. That was not what, that is not what God wants us to do. We need to remind, ask God to remind us how much we have been forgiven. And then as the second part of the, the Lord's Prayer says, you know, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against others. It is not just about forgiving. It is about asking how God, uh, how God can use us as His tool for the community. Let us ask God how we can be used in His hands for the community. And I want to turn to two of my favorite writers, uh, Henry Cloud and John Townsend. And, he, and they said this, it says, although God can, although He can, God doesn't do everything. You know, God doesn't drive your car to church. God doesn't use all sorts of resources to help us in life. But He uses the witness of creation to draw us to Him. And He uses people. God's love is manifested through many channels, including this one. His creatures loving and helping His creatures. And so, you know, in it, and, 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 and the authors continue in this article and shows how in four different ways we can help one another. And I list them out for you as I end. Well, God, use, God will use each, each of us to help someone else to grow. And so, you know, the, the, the call of the church has always been those of us who are more mature in the faith, those of us who have grown a bit more, those of us who know a little bit more, help the younger ones, right? Come and serve, help the younger ones, disciple somebody else. You know, help us, help each other in our spiritual growth. We also can help each other by comforting one another. And I'm not talking just about emotional needs, physical needs, which I think we are, we are doing very well as a church. But sometimes comfort is needed when somebody is going through a hard time. Somebody is going through a hard time where he doesn't understand why is God allowing him to go through this hard time. That is when our comfort is also needed. How can we comfort one another? Thirdly, we can also provide wisdom and God use, you know, God, have, God has used many of you to provide me godly counsel and wisdom, especially when I come to you. And I want to thank God for that. Let's do that for one another. And finally, repair. You know, if something is wrong somewhere, let's admonish each other lovingly. Let's make good. Let's make good. You know, I want to leave, with this, leave you with this final thought, you know. In this season uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the circuit uh, breaker, uh, I realize that many things of the church can be duplicated or replicated in other forms. But the only thing that I have not been, been able to do very well is this sense of community, you know, to, that, that we can gather together again and shake each other's hands and be each other's presence. Uh, this, this sense of community. And that's why we've been working so hard to try and keep the community going. You know, so I say to you, keep meeting your small groups. Now, now you can only meet on Zoom. Please do it, you know. And we have having this uh, church at eight for, for, for a couple of weeks now. You know, come together as God's community. It is very important to do so. But more important than that, I want to invite you to ask God how He can use you as a tool, as a tool in this time and in the season to come. My prayer is that we will learn to forgive each other so that we can be reconciled and then we can all together fulfill the great commandment. Let us pray. God, we come to you and we thank you that you have shown us so much mercy. Help us never to forget that, but help us to grow as grateful people for the forgiveness that you've given us, to be 
as ready to forgive someone else. And together, Lord, as a church, as a community, our forgiveness that we receive from you and we, 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 we give to each other, Lord, will then help us to be that community that can fully, Lord, embrace who you are, to come to know you, and to become the community that, Lord, you want us to be. So, Father, I commit, Lord, our church to you, that having learned this lesson, you will help us to grow, Lord, to become more and more like you and to be the community that you want us to be. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. In closing, my sisters and brothers in Christ, let us sing this song to one another, telling each other that God has forgiven us our sin and in faith, we will, we will, we will respond and love one another. Let's sing this song freely, freely. God forgive my sins in Jesus name I've been born again in Jesus name and in Jesus name I come to you to share his love as he told me to he said freely freely you have received freely freely give and Jesus said go in my name and be
waters will know that I live. Thank you, God. Church, we're at this point of the service where we want to highlight some family news and announcements to you. The first announcement has to do with the tithes and offerings. Uh, you can continue to give to God uh, through online platforms. We're not able to meet in person, but we have some online platforms that you can continue to use to give of your tithes and offerings. And we're going to put it on the screen right now for you. There are three ways that you can give. The first way to give is through internet banking. The second way for you to give is through PayNow uh, using the UEN number or the QR code on the screen. And the third way, it's not listed on the screen, but uh, you can continue to mail off your check to TMC and one of our staff will collect it and process it uh, periodically and accordingly as well. So right now, can I encourage you, let's press the pause button and let's give of our tithes and offering. The next announcement has to do with something Pastor Elvin announced last week. Uh, he announced it last week where he announced that TMC is uh, beginning two new initiatives. Uh, let me recap for us. The first initiative is called Shelter at TMC. You know, what we've done is we've turned TMC into a shelter for rough sleepers during this season. And uh, we're, we can currently take up to eight individuals, uh, male individuals, our premises. And this week we welcomed a couple of our residents to come and stay with us who are seeking shelter and who, are, uh, who found the shelter at TMC. And uh, we just want to continue to pray for them. We want to continue to really uh, press in and believe uh, and pray that they will uh, truly not only experience this physical shelter and find peace and comfort here, but also experience the peace and comfort of having God as uh, 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 truly the great shelter and a great refuge of our lives. You know, the second thing we, we, uh, we highlighted last week was this AAD, Adopt a Dormitory, where last week we announced that uh, TMC has decided to adopt a, a, a migrant worker dormitory. Uh, and what this means is that we actually, uh, uh, we actually provide their daily meals for them. And we also uh, provide further care and support to them in other ways as well. You know, last week, uh, Pastor Elvin shared uh, there were three things that you can do to get involved. And I'm very glad to announce this. I'm so happy to announce this to us that, uh, you know, even as Pastor Elvin did a recording last week on Wednesday, uh, what we didn't know is that by actually by Thursday, all the volunteer slots had been filled by you guys. And so uh, that's great news, church. And it's so glad to see how the church has stepped up and risen up during this season. Uh, but you still can get involved in other ways, which is to donate and to pray. Uh, we're still uh, collecting donations for this course. You know, we, we are trying to raise funds for this course as well. And so we want to encourage you, if you, are, you, are, you have the means to please continue to give towards this. How you can give is through the same QR code that you have for your tithes and offerings. And instead of just leaving the reference blank, we want you to put a reference TMC AAD, and this would help us to know that this fund should be directed to this course. Uh, the other thing you can do is to pray. Join us in praying for this whole thing. Join us in praying for the whole uh, situation in Singapore. Join us to pray for the protection and the safety also of the migrant workers and also our volunteers who are serving in some way or another. Uh, the next announcement we have has to do with uh, discipleship and nurture. Uh, you know, it, the church has been, our services has been stopped for a couple of months now, uh, but our church has not stopped. And so one of the things that we're doing is we've begun to uh, start these programs on weekdays called Church at Eight, where you can stay connected to the church community and continue to grow together with us. So every night at 8 p.m. on a weekday, from so Monday to Fridays, we have something going on for you to be a part of if you wish to do so. You know, Monday, Pastor Byron leads us in uh, equipping where he's teaching us some spiritual habits and rhythms. Uh, on Tuesday and Thursdays, Pastor Elvin leads us in this thing called Vesper at 8. On Wednesdays, we have church-wide prayer meetings. And on Friday, Pastor Sung uh, leads us in a, few, in, in a time of just fun and fellowship, you know, uh, where we play some games and we just stay connected as a community as well. And I want to encourage you, wherever you are, you know, to, to, to Zoom in, join in the Zoom rooms and, and join us. There are more details in the bulletin for you to, and also the details of how you can be a part of this in the digital bulletin uh, in the drive that we've sent to you. And the last thing that I want to also uh, highlight to you is this uh, new program that we have. It's a book club, uh, an initiative by the Discipleship and Nurture Ministry. 
Uh, it's a book club where you know you guys have there's an opportunity for you to continue connecting with one another and sharing what God has been speaking to you and what God spoke to you through your current reading materials as well. And so we want to encourage you wherever you are. Uh, you know this is something for you to 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 join in. It's a monthly thing as well. And is if you want to find out more, there's going to be an interest tea, a welcome tea, and an interest group uh, coming up on the 17th of May at 4 p.m. And the link and the registration link is going to be right below here. And uh, I want to encourage you, if this interests you, to please sign up for it and check it out as well. Uh, church, we're at this point of the service where we want to uh, say the benediction, but instead of uh, uh, us saying to you, we're going to do it the, the church at home style. And we're going to say the ironic benediction. This is found in Deuteronomy. And I want to encourage you, wherever you are right now, you know, to, to stand uh, wherever you are. And if you are with family and watching with someone, uh, turn to one another, bless one another, and let's say this together. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. The Lord lift up his countenance to us and give us peace. Amen. Church service is over, but uh, don't rush off yet. We have some discussion questions and reflection questions for you to, to uh, both reflect on, but also maybe to discuss with some friends or with family uh, or even with your small group online as well. So uh, we're going to put it on the screen for you. And uh, if not, until then, until next week, church, stay safe and God bless.